Okay, it's Monday. When you watch this video, chances are I'll either be A, sleeping, or B, I will be at work, or C, somewhere in between. Why? Because I got a lot of hours this week, so that's the reason why this video is coming out when it is. And another thing, since this video is being shot on Sunday, even though this is Monday's video, I am not exactly sure when I'm going to be able to view Survivor Series. I have to work till close tonight, so it doesn't really make it that easy. So, if I tried to give you guys predictions, it would just pretty much be disproven or proven, so there's no point to even talk about that. In essence, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to review the shows for what they were, and uh, I really won't talk about Survivor Series because what's the point? It's already happened by the time you see this video. So, either John Cena's team won, or John Cena's team lost. We have new champions, or we don't. We had surprises, or we don't. It's anyone's guess. But I can honestly say that I'm in the single digits now, so nine more days. I'll be back in Orlando, thankfully. <laughs> Let's talk NXT, shall we? Show started off with a matchup between Bailey and Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch, of course, is uh, accompanied to the ring by uh, the boss, Sasha Banks. This match was pretty decent for a short match for what it was. And the match ended with a roll-up with the tights from Becky. And Charlotte came down after the match was over and basically pointed at both Sasha and Becky and said, you know what, you two, get out of the ring. So we're building towards a tag match between the two. Charlotte becoming very protective of someone she used to treat like crap. So it's interesting to see where we go from here. Obviously, Charlotte being put over as the biggest uh, babyface on the women's roster in NXT, I think that's probably not a really great fit for her, but... There's really not many options at this point. You could go with Bailey, which it looked like they wanted to do, but then they kind of cooled off on it. And then you could do something with Alexa Bliss, but again, they're cooling off on that. They could have done something with Becky Lynch, but they turned her heel, so we can't really do anything right there. So now there really isn't many challengers for uh, the NXT uh, Women's Champion right now. Obviously, we're leading towards the Charlotte Sasha Banks former battle of the former BFFs. That's going to take place at. Uh, the next NXT TakeOver, which is R Evolution, which is R in like the Nexus font with Evolution. So it's basically Revolution with an R with a box around it. Still yellow and black, so still NXT makes perfect sense. So after this is over, obviously, Charlotte and Bailey were talking in the back, and Charlotte says, You know what? I'm not going to be here next week, so got some advice for you. Don't go anywhere near Sasha or Becky, and basically. This is for your own good. This is for your own protection. We'll see if Becky listens or not. We had the VOD villains basically come out, and they faced off against two um, minis that were dressed like the Lucha Dragons. I guess uh, Renee Young's line of Lucha, Lu Lucha Lumpas actually made the most sense there. And uh, they were, um, if you were curious, they were El Torito and Blix from Hulk Hogan's Micro Championship Wrestling. I found this out. So they toyed with the... Uh, mini Lucha Dragons, like, during the entire match, or basically, like, tossed each other one Lucha Dragon, and they tossed each other the other mini Lucha Dragon. Simon Gotch was doing squats, and eventually got to the end. Gotch hit this European uppercut to the back of the head to the swing neck breaker from Aiden English, and they finished off the mini Lucha Dragons to send a message to the NXT Tag Team Champions Kalisto and Sin Cara. Obviously, they're going to be facing off once again at NXT TakeOver R Evolution, which I'm really excited for because as long as everything works out, I'm going to be in attendance, and I'm excited for that. Then we got a really awesome promo. The video states, I will fight anyone and everyone. Bet against me if you want to, but it's my turn now. I am the future, and the eyes pop open, you see a very familiar face, a very familiar bearded face, and in very cryptic looking font, it says the numbers 12 slash 11 slash 14, which means the debut of a new superstar in NXT, and a superstar that has been known all around the world as Kevin Steen will finally make his NXT debut coming up on December 11th at NXT TakeOver Our Evolution, which I'm really looking forward to, because I've never seen Steen, like, I really have never seen much of Kevin Steen at all. I've seen a little bit. I've seen a lot of the older stuff, the older Mr. Wrestling stuff, the stuff with Player Uno, 
but I really haven't seen much of his ROH work. I really haven't seen much of his indie work, but I have heard a lot of amazing things, and I'm very excited that I'm going to be able to see him live and in person coming up at TakeOver Our Evolution on December 11th. Very excited about that. I pretty much have been saying since day one what's going to end up happening after Sami Zayn hits the Haluva kick and finally pins Adrian Neville to win the NXT Championship. Some unfamiliar music is going to hit, and Kevin Steen's going to come out and says, you know who I am, like the Scott Hall thing, you know who I am, but you don't know why I'm here. In this case, Sami Zayn will know exactly why he's here, and that's to become the future, and by becoming the future, he has to take out a piece of his past. So, Steen and Zayn face-to-face, -face, and that's how we end NXT TakeOver, our evolution. Steen, what is going to be going by the name of Kevin Owens, which, of course, is a shout-out to the late, great Owen Hart, as well as his son, Owen, who he named after Owen Hart. Kevin Steen, not a Sir Owen Disney fan, but then again, he doesn't know me, so... Other than a little bit of uh, interaction we've had talking about <laughs> Disney Channel television series on Twitter, I really haven't got a chance to talk to Kevin Steen very much. I do know he is a zoo enthusiast, though, so yes. That's going to be interesting to see what happens. <laughs> Excuse me. So, Baron Corbin came out, squashed Elias Samson like a grape. 22 seconds, end of days, done the party, fans chanting along the, the time. Match over, goes right into Bull Dempsey coming out, and he basically squashes Steve Cutler like a grape. He ends it with the uh, falling headbutt off the top, and we're heading towards a collision between these two. I have a feeling they're going to be on the undercard of TakeOver Our Evolution because they're building this to be the old Gorilla Monsoon adage of the irresistible force meeting the immovable object, and I'm pretty sure that's exactly where we're going. I don't have an issue with that because it'll give them something to do. We had a matchup between Tyson Kidd and C.J. Parker, two heels. Yeah, sure, go figure. Tyson at one point reversed the hammer lock by stepping through the ropes and countering back into that hammer lock. I really appreciated that maneuver. So he hit a dragon screw in the ropes while CJP was trying to get back in the ring. He nailed him with the stampede swing, which I'm now going to start calling the fact check, because it makes perfect sense, because obviously it's all about fact. So he hits the fact check, locks in the sharpshooter match over. After the match is over, he gets on the mic and he challenges Finn Balor to a singles match next week on NXT. So next week we're going to get Finn Balor in singles action against Tyson Kidd. I want to see this very much bad, So, and that's a reference I haven't said in a long time. Tyson Kidd has been revolutionary in his uh, rebirth as a in-ring competitor you can honestly take seriously on WWE broadcasting, and I'm really curious to see what happens with this matchup with Finn Balor. Obviously, this should be pretty good, really good singles matchup. Very excited to see that. It's going to happen this coming week on NXT. Enzo Amore is shadow boxing with Colin Cassidy. Carmella walks up. Basically, Carmella goes to talk, and they got to get to the ring because they have a match. Obviously, in ring next tag team action it is the mechanics the new team of scott dawson and dash wilder taking on the team of big cast colin cassidy and enzo amore enzo goes through his awesome spiel which the entire full sale crowd knows by heart it's gonna be fun to be in the middle of that and he says we're not the parker brothers but we'll scrabble your dome piece and, of course, when he says we're not the Parker Brothers, uh, Big Cat says, no games. And Enzo completes it and says, we're going to monopolize you. We're going to connect for your face, or your eye in this case, and we'll never feel sorry for you. And these two guys are S-A-W-F-T soft. And, of course, this match is short, straight, and to the point. There is a finishing maneuver by the... Uh, Team of Enzo and Big Cass, the inverted atomic drop into the big boot from Cass, and that spells the end. Match over, they go to leave the ring, they get a jump from behind by Victor and Connor, the Ascension, and once they get dealt with, and by dealt with, Big Cass gets thrown off the entrance ramp. Well, they go in the ring and they attack Dash Wilder, and Scott Dawson beat them down for a minute. Victor gets on the mic and he basically says to Finn Balor and Hideo Itami that we're not dead, but the two of you, very soon you will be. Connor ends it and says, you know what, this is far from over, we will rise again. So we're building towards another tag team match with the Ascension against Finn Balor and Hideo Itami. So I'm going to guess in the Baylor and Kid match, Balor and Kid match, I got to get used to that because the, the pronunciation is crazy the way it's spelled. The Balor and a 
uh, kid match that's going to happen on NXT this coming week, I think that it's probably going to be marred by Ascension interference, and I think that probably makes the most sense that would happen. So, we get Sami Zayn coming out. First, he talks to uh, William Regal in kind of a throwaway segment. But he basically comes out, and he's going to address the crowd and what's been going on with him lately. He basically says that he's always known he's been great, he's always known that he's been worth it, but now he's starting to doubt himself. He's starting to basically believe all the hype that everybody's saying that he can't win the big one. So, in a friendly manner, he calls out Adrian Neville, basically respectfully calls him out, and he says if he can't win the big one, then he's done. He doesn't know why he's here in the first place. Sammy knows that Adrian doesn't know him, doesn't owe him anything, but as a friend, he would like one last opportunity to become NXT champion. So he furthermore says if he can't win, he's done. Neville says, you know what, I'd love to give you a rematch. I'd give you one right now, but it's not in my hands, it's in William Regal's hands. So of course, keep that in mind. So he says, you know what, pick your chin up. You don't need to prove anything. And Zayn gets up in his face and says, you know what, you don't need to tell me who, what I do or do not need to prove at this point. The proof is in the pudding, and that proof is over your shoulder right now. Obviously talking about the NXT Championship itself. If I can't beat you, I don't need to be here. He re reiterates your statement. Here comes William Regal. Really awesome theme music, really dooming theme music. He gets a huge face reaction. Gotta love Full Sail Crowd. Can't wait to be a part of it. Says, Sammy, you're way far from being a failure. You've proven time in and time out that you're worthy of a championship rematch. I can't think of a better main event for NXT TakeOver or Evolution as Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville for the NXT Championship. We're continuing the evolution of NXT, and it will take place at TakeOver, basically is what he said. He says, Adrian Neville refuses to be responsible for ending Sami Zayn's career, and ending his dream entirely, Sammy once more says for the final time, if I can't beat you, I'm done. And then he bombs out. Short episode of NXT this week. Um, I will state right now that the matches were short, straight and to the point. All about getting storylines over. You're doing the Becky and uh, Bailey match. Basically, that was all about getting to the tag match involving Sasha Banks and Charlotte. And eventually building towards the Sasha-Charlotte match. We're getting a takeover, our evolution. Vaude Villain sending a message to the NXT Tag Team Champions, the Lucha Dragons, by squashing a pair of minis dressed up in Nacho Libre masks with Lucha Dragons t-shirts. Uh, yeah, that, that was basically to build that match up. The debut of Kevin Owens basically being put over, and we're going to see what he does when he shows up on December 11th to take over. And obviously, you have the game of one-upsmanship between Baron Corbin and Bull Dempsey. They're two bulls ready to collide, and they're going to at takeover. Mark my words. Tyson Kidd beats CJ Parker and then issues an open challenge to Finn Balor to meet him in the ring based upon the tag match from last week with the international airstrike against Balor and Hideo Itami in their official in-ring debut for NXT as a tag team. Big Cass and Enzo end up getting the victory over the mechanics, but they end up getting squashed by the Ascension. The Ascension basically proven that they're not done and that Hideo Itami and Finn Balor better be watching over their shoulders at all times. And finally, Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville going to hook it up one more time with the NXT Championship on the line. And if Sami Zayn does not win, he's gone. Done so. Fired. Not fired, but he's firing himself from NXT. He's completely eliminating himself from the company. I like this episode. I thought it worked really well. So, uh, SmackDown's a little harder to review, given the fact that this all hinges on Survivor Series and a lot of stuff I really can't talk about. Triple H basically says that, you know, the authority is the WWE... And without the authority, there is no WWE. And without their, their WWE, there is no WWE Universe. The fans, their opinion is meaningless. Everyone in the Attitude Era is gone, yet Triple H still remains. Well, he's the constant. And that's why the Authority is going to win. Or would have won the day before, since technically this is Monday. So yeah, that's why he was saying in this promo, the Authority would win on Sunday. If we lose, or if we lost in this case, you will be begging us to come back in a few months. Triple H reveals the simple fact that if John Cena's team loses, 
Hey, they're going to fire everyone on the team except for Cena. Okay. Rusev in uh, non-title action. Uh, the United States champion facing off against Dolph Ziggler. This match was good. Uh, I really enjoyed these two's chemistry in the ring. I liked the uh, finish of the match. So, the stomp, he goes for the accolade. Ziggler counters out of it. Don't forget, he's a he has a wrestling background, so he knows how to counter out of this. Counters out, hits the zigzag, one, two, and at three, Rusev kicks out. So, we go a little bit further. He goes for the exclamation point, DDT. He gets elevator down, into the Muay Thai kick, and that's the end. Match over, accolade just to prove a point. Kane's talking to someone off camera. It's proven to be Cesaro. Cesaro's basically showing he could be a company man. He may not be an officially a part of the authority team, but he knows exactly where his bread is buttered, obviously. And he'll do whatever they ask. And basically, Kane wants him to take care of Eric Rowan. All right. Tag team action. The Miz and Damian Mizdow taking on Los Matadores. This match was short, straight, and to the point. And Usos and Stardust and Goldust at commentary at ringside, of course. Building up the four-way that we had last night at Survivor Series, given the fact this is Monday, which hopefully we crowned new tag team champions. I'm sure we probably did. So, Miz ended up getting tossed into the Usos, and Sandow tosses himself into Gold Dust and Stardust. Miz gets tossed into the ring, flying body press, one, two, three, Matadors win. So, there was that. AJ comes out dressed as Nikki Bella. Uh, wearing uh, butt pads and everything. She had her, like, her top is stuffed and everything. She's acting like Nikki. She's got the the really toolbox hat, the snap cap. She's wearing that. Bree's laughing, and of course when Bree laughs, Nikki slaps her to the side of the head. So this match was real short. AJ taking on Bree, and um, Bree actually had a nice little run there, hit the uh, running knee, and then the Bree mode got a two off of that. Nikki got up on the ropes. It proved to be her downfall because Brie got tossed into Nikki. Nikki gets knocked off, and of course, schoolgirl roll up one, two, three. Match over. Nikki nailed Brie for good measure, and uh, building towards the match they had yesterday, which probably crowned a new champion, whether it's right or wrong. Eric Rowan to face Cesaro, and uh, the match was short, uh, simple, basically. Cesaro ended up getting hit with a tackle, the Bane backbreaker connects, locked in the torture rack, and Cesaro had to tap out. Luke Harper walked out with the Intercontinental Championship and gestured to get in the ring once, no, twice, no, and he ended up leaving. So obviously we do not get a brawl between the former Wyatt family to end the show. So Renee's in the back with the big show Dolph Ziggler and Ryback as well as Eric Rowan. And Rowan, of course, ends the uh, entire segment by saying, Freedom, they'll put their fists out. And it kind of reminds me of that old man in the IHOP commercials that I uh, remember because of the Nostalgia Critic. So we get a segment that involves the uh, Drew, the Drew, I said Drew Carey, I have no idea why I said that. The uh, Dean Ambrose uh, survival kit, I want to mention that real quick before we go into the main event because that's pretty much all that's left on this show. This is a very, very, very short recap is what it looks like at this point. So Ambrose tells a story. His mom gave him money for cigarettes. So older kids took his money and when his mom was told what happened, she gave little Ambrose brass knuckles and said, don't let anything like this ever happen again. Great parenting. So the brass knuckle used to be his survival kit, and now his entire body is a survival kit himself. He says that he plans to break Bray Wyatt's nose, and then he wants to break his teeth. He's going to swell up his eyes, and then in order for him to survive, he'll be the one that's going to have to run. He says the father stuff got a little bit under his skin, but the fact remains he's not a kid anymore. He's a man. He's going to take Bray Wyatt down, and then Bray appears on the screen inside of a jail cell for whatever reason. He says, do you remember your father and the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree? He's going to promise to leave Ambrose in a pile of his own filth just like his father did. So we're continuing the father aspects, building to their match that happened last night in Survivor Series. Like I said, this, this recap's all over the place because I really can't talk about it because all this stuff's already happened. Ugh. Hopefully I can get this done. Uh, main event time, Seth Rollins and Kane taking on Ryback in the Big Show, and Dolph Ziggler and Eric Rowan are barred from ringside. John Cena's not, but he's way too busy to be out at ringside for his team. So this match was, um, it was our, eh, it was okay, I guess, what it was. So, they ended up attacking Ryback, oh, sorry, Big Show on the floor. So that was the end of that. 
and there's a big brawl, and Eric Rowan comes out after Dolph runs out. So let me let me break this down for you, shall we? So at this point, goes for the shell shock on Seth Rollins. Jamie Noble ends up getting eaten by a clothesline. Rollins gets nailed with a spine buster from Ryback. Mercury nails Ryback from behind. Mercury Noble two on one. Dolph comes out, starts pinballing Noble and Mercury until he runs into Luke Harper's big boot. Now this big boot ends up bringing out Eric Rowan. Rowan comes out, big boots Mark Henry on the floor. Clotheslines Rusev on the floor, gets in the ring and stare down with his former Wyatt family partner. And this allows for distraction. Kane choke slams him. And here comes Ryback, Spinebuster on Kane. Harper nails Ryback with the Discus Lariat. And zigzag to Luke Harper. And Muay Thai kick to Dolph Ziggler. And Dolph walks into Mark Henry's World's Strongest Slam. The Authority work over until here comes the big show. And he ends up getting, like, piled on. And then they push him off because Big Show's stoning his strength. So he chops away, double choke slam on Mercury and Noble. And here comes Triple H with the chair. And he starts systematically destroying every single member of uh, the face team with a steel chair, and he ends it with a pedigree on Ryback to uh, put the exclamation point on the authority's dominance and lead to that match that I've heard rumored for uh, the Royal Rumble between Ryback and Triple H. Um, this did a good way to uh, set up the show that you already watched yesterday. Yeah, there's really not much I can say right now. I can't really even say what I think is going to happen for the show because it already happened. Who knows when I'm going to get to watch it, but it already happened. So, yeah, that was SmackDown. Um, what would I recommend? Um, Rusev and Dolph Ziggler was good. Short, but good. Um, Rowan and Cesaro, interesting. It was an interesting match. Main event tag match. Eh. It, it's, it was there. It was a match. So, yeah, this was a very thrown-together edition of NXT and SmackDown. Um, hopefully next week will be better because, obviously, I'll be able to actually be on top of everything next week. Now, don't forget, I will say right now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a programming note here on POP. So, next week is, next weekend, obviously, is um, the weekend of Thanksgiving. Black Friday leads you into Sunday, which is the last WW Today podcast before Reunion, which that video is actually going to be Wednesday, for weirdly enough. That's going to be my vlog of randomness this week. And Thursday, we'll kick right into a sip and snack, a uh, special Thanksgiving sip and snack, which I'm not going to eat anything Thanksgiving related. I'm going to eat au gratin potatoes and drink some Capri Sun and Mountain Dew uh, game fuel. So, yeah, there's always that. But, yeah, a quick programming note right now. I will be going through NXT and SmackDown this coming Monday, which is December 1st. And December 2nd will be Raw. And December 3rd... Um, We'll see what happens for the rest of it because uh, wrestling will be preempt. Actually, yeah, wrestling will be preempted the week after, obviously, because I'm going to be in Orlando, so won't have time to really watch anything. But I'll try to if I can. So uh, wrestling will go away for a week, but I'll be back. No worries. I'm not going to disappear like I did for quite a while. Everything needs to go back to normal. So in that case, um, hopefully you enjoyed Survivor Series last night. Sorry, this review's all over the place, but I really can't really talk about anything because I don't know what happened on Survivor Series. Did Sting show up? Is he the new Authority figure? Did Randy Orton show up and cost the Authority the match, which I think easily could have happened? Did we get another surprise? Maybe a Chris Jericho, potentially. Doubtful, but you never know. Who won the big finish of the Survivor Series? Is there new tag team champions? I mean, is there a new Divas champion? There's... A lot of questions that I personally can't answer right now because it's Sunday, but I can say that you guys probably already know the answer. So I will probably be recapping Raw tomorrow with not seeing the pay-per-view. That's going to be fun. So yeah, this was all over the place, but hopefully you still enjoyed it anyway. In the meantime, if you like these videos, tell your friends about them, leave a comment, do subscribe, help spread the word about Pop. If you haven't yet, go to Facebook, click like on our Facebook fan page, it is Suro and Disney Pop. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Suro and Disney. Send me a friend request on Facebook, let me know that you like the channel, it is Owen Disney. Last but not least, if you'd like to uh, talk wrestling with me, or Disney, Universal, you want to talk Halloween Horror Nights, talk about movies or music, you want to discuss any of the upcoming uh, segments we have on Pop, obviously, you have Vlog of Randomness ideas, or you want to become a part of Sip and Snack, or have a Sip and Snack suggestion, or a suggestion for verses, you can send me an email, Disney at gmail.com. So in the meantime, I want to thank you guys and girls out there for watching, and until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all i got to say about that.